What up, everybody? It's your boy, Alameen here. I just want to talk about what is spirituality, man, because we have so many religions that are telling us regurgitating scriptures of spirituality and doing some kind of yoga, which is Salat, is supposed to be spirituality. We're being told if we unite with other people during a certain time of the day, that's spirituality. We're told if we do singing, that's spirituality essentially but what is really spirituality really i mean what is it we all want it we all want to be closer to god but what is being spiritual a lot of people don't don't ask themselves these very important questions is spirituality sitting in a lotus position and connecting deeper with yourself perhaps for me personally I find spirituality is just being able to connect on a deeper level with the things around you. And when I say the things around you, I'm talking about the moon, the planets, the sun, the stars, nature, trees, lakes. To me, those are all things that God created with the intention that we would be able to observe the significance and the magnificent of the creation. And I don't worship God in the way that other people worship God. For me, what I worship God is, for me, it's by using the spiritual gifts that God gave me for the sake of His benefits, for the sake of His people. Because everybody has a spiritual gift, but the question is, do you know what the spiritual gift is? Right? I mean, we, uh, too many Muslims think they're going to go to heaven or Jannah they go to the mosque four times a day man that that's like that's like saying if i show up to my shift every day i will eventually retire and although that might be true it's probably not going to be true in this modern economy right just because you show up every day it doesn't mean that you're spiritual most muslims that i know when they pray at least from my personal experience when i pray i'm not even in the i'm not even in the mosque presently right I'm mean, usually thinking about this stuff. I'm thinking about what am I going to eat? Who am I going to go hang out with? When is this thing going to fucking end? Because as far as I'm concerned, I've never felt a spiritual connection, right? Well, what my dad told me was that he feels a spiritual connection when he prays, right? He said he feels he's connected to God somehow. And I'm pretty sure that's a lie. Because, you know, my dad always tried to get me to pray with him. And really, he didn't do it through, like, spreading truth. They would just, most Muslims, especially parents, would do it through manipulation, mis misguidance, and misinformation, right? They're going to promise you this incredible feeling. If you just submit yourself to God, if you just submit yourself to your Salat, if you do things of that nature, you're going to feel incredible during your Salat. But you know how I see my dad every day? He has the, mo he has the most grumpiest face ever, right? He can't even control his emotions to a high degree like I can and it's crazy because I'm, I'm you know I'm his son I'm younger than him right and I can do this to a much more greater degree than you know he can he ever can it's the little things that bother my dad it's the little things that bother him like when he sees like a plate in the kitchen that's not clean that really pisses him off so if the little things can bother you in life how are you going to handle the big things right where's the spirituality in that and I know most, most of my friends' parents are like that. Too many people claim to be saints, but they're actually devils and demons on the inside, right? The devil usually does this, right? He comes in wearing garments of silver and gold. It'll be like President Barack Obama. It'll be like the biggest people, the biggest rap artists, the biggest industry leaders that are actually the most demonically possessed people in the world, right? Man. We have to focus, I, mean, I think we have to focus on not necessarily achieving the attainable. Basically, spirituality for me is the ability to connect with things around you in the world, connect with people, and the most important to be able to connect with who you really are. That's the most important one, to connect, to be able to connect with who you really are, right? Because as a child, you knew who you were. You knew what you were here to do. As a child, I was a very joyful person. I can't find a, I can't find one picture of me not smiling when I was a kid. 
I was always smiling. I was always happy. I was always spreading love. And that's what we're all we're doing as children. But, you know, we grow up and this world just corrupts us. And I guess, like, some, at some point you have to deal with what reality is. But, you know, never let reality take away the joy that's within you. Too many of us let us do that. Too many of us have allowed life to let us bitter. Just because of the defined circumstances and defined positions we've been put into. Too many men grow up not being able to get a girlfriend in high school and thinking that that's a bad thing and letting that and letting that affect them and taking down a negative path. It's the circumstances of this life that takes away the joy from you. And I believe it, it is a system that is designed. It's designed to be that way, right? Just take this in. Like, demons, they can't feed. They can't eat unless you're in the state of grief, unless you're in a state, unless you're in a negative emotional state. That's when they can feed from you. Literally, demons run this world, bro. Devils and demons run this world. The gods are literally you and I. We just forgot who we are. And we let a bunch of demons and devils run this world together as a collective group. And we just became disbanded. And uh, the story, the Tower of Babel is very important. They all spoke one tongue. They all had one language. And there's nothing they could not accomplish. Because they all knew the way. But these devils and demons, they came in and they dispersed us. They dispersed our, they dispersed our unity. They dispersed our understanding. And now we're all just ignorant. Living in a world where suffering happens low key. And we just ignore it. Too many people I know decide to put on the horse blinders and just ignore everything that's going on in their life. They ignore the circumstances around them. They ignore how their friends may feel. They ignore how things around them in the world may not be as how they seem. I mean, the United States is supposed to be the safest country in the world, yet children are getting kidnapped almost every day for, for to be raped by pedophiles. And you tell me that's the safest country in the world? We have to renew the way we see the world, guys. Because the world is definitely not what we what we see. Your neighbor can't right now. Your neighbor can be a serial killer. Those guys are really good actors, man. You're not going to really know what's a serial killer unless you have spiritual perception. And too many Muslims and Imams and Christian leaders lie about having spiritual perception they have no spiritual perception whatsoever most of them are just academics that regurgitate old scriptures written by men and people before them unable to think for themselves unable to think about this modern era and how to apply new rules and new ideas with it i mean we as people has, have constantly evolved to the environment and to the circumstances around us and that's what we, that's what we've been doing for years and years and years but now what we see is, we see religious people unable to evolve to the new circumstances, to the new tradition, to the new world that's coming about. Because you have to remember, when the moon, when the planets and the sun are moving in certain areas in life, right? That signifies that there's a, a cosmic change coming. There's a new frequency that can be embedded in this planet. This is really important, guys. Before we were in the age of duality, we were in the age of Aquarius, right? We were in the age where people were fighting against each other. If you look at the symbols of the fish, the Pisces, the two fish swimming opposite to each other, that is exactly what people have been doing for the last millennia. And it makes sense because that was the, that was the age that we are in. So people were just inventing new traditions, rebranding things. And again, like the Kit Kat and the Mars bar are all owned by the same company, but it's the same product at the end of the day. The same materials are being used, similar materials, right? So in that age, people were just Christianity came, Islam came, Judaism came, Hinduism came, Buddhism came. And I'm not saying they're not greater religions, but none of them bring us in unity in who we are. Because once you understand who you are, there is no way on God's green earth that you would want to go burn a tree. Because you would be able to see yourself in that tree. 
you'll be able to see that that tree is alive that that tree is a smart functioning organism of the earth the earth itself is alive as well the earth is Gaia the earth is the mother I would even argue that the Sun has its own consciousness too so does the moon but that's a whole other topic for another video right so we we're living in the age of duality before this but now we are in the age of Aquarius now I don't know exactly when it started but we look at the symbol of Aquarius the Aquarius, the water bearer, is pouring down knowledge in all flesh. Now we see like a mass awakening happen. We see people be able to achieve psychic ability, psychic phenomena. People, be, people who are clairvoyant, people who are psychic, right? People that can uh, send healing and light frequencies from a whole other country because really distance is an illusion. When, you're, when you can literally hop out of your body and ask to project and go to different places in the world, when you can take your awareness to another location and be able to see through it essentially right so the age of Aquarius is here and people are waking up because the knowledge is being poured on all flesh on the earth doesn't matter if you're black white brown Asian everybody's receiving this gnosis everybody's receiving this knowledge so what we have to do is we have to accept this awakening we have to accept this knowledge because literally there's no running away from it what are you, you're going to run away from the sun? You're going to run away from cosmic frequencies that are raining down the earth? Now the demonic ones, the fallen ones, the ones who have fallen low, they're the ones who are trying to run away from it. They're the ones who don't want to awaken to love and unity and truth. Because this world for the longest time has been run on uh, disunity, putting one group against the other, disharmony, hate. That's how they operate. If you want to call them the reptilians, the fallen ones, the snake, brotherhood. That's what they want. That's the vision that they want. They don't want us to be together. They don't want us to be united. They don't want us to share technologies with each other. Right? They want us to maintain a state of hate. As long as we maintain disunity, disharmony. As long as the dark-skinned ones hate the light-skinned ones. And the light-skinned ones hate the dark-skinned ones etc this planet will never see true love it will never truly bloom we're almost there i well, shouldn't say we're almost there but it has starts has, it starts with me and you right it starts with me and you it starts with us recognizing each other as worthy equals people with different spiritual gifts that can be used and utilized for the benefit of this planet, for the benefit of each other. It starts with us, the younger generation, it starts with us millennials. We can no longer afford to live in hate, envy, jealousy. We have to unite, guys. It's your boy, Alamin. I'll see you guys next time.